Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate that very much. Today, my spirit guides, or I should say, I have a new spirit guide that just jumped into my consciousness and wanted to start talking about medical advancements and predictions or likely energy probabilities for 2023. So here we go. First of all, to make any sense of this, because this is a chatty, uh, a chatty chat, a chatty, what do they call it? Chap, a chatty chap. Maybe he's British. Um, I have to slow him down because he's just like talking about all kinds of things at once. So what I asked him to do is let's just start at the head and work our way down to give him and me some kind of structure so that I can get this message across in a way that might make some kind of sense. So as we start with our head, um, with the human head, <laughs> um, the first thing they're talking about, um, gosh, I really have to keep him on track. There's like a million things that they want to talk about. And I, I really am trying to make this have some kind of context, but they went to blood flow. Um, Okay, so now they're talking about strokes. Okay, so that makes sense with the head, I guess. So they're talking about platelets. I have no idea what that has to do with anything. They're talking about blood flow. They're talking about new medicines for circulation, for blood flow, uh, to regulate, to regulate blood pressure, to regulate blood flow, um, to even, uh, to, to describe what they're saying is, I guess we have blood thinners, right? That uh, allow the blood to, I don't know what it does. But anyway, it's a new kind of blood thinner that is much better. Like I'm talking about a game changer, okay? I'm talking about a game changer. And and this is important because of blood clots. Uh, they want to talk about this new medication really being able to dissolve or not really, it's not a dissolve. The blood is easily able to go around obstructions. I'll just describe it that way, whether it's a clot or it's a stricture, a clot, a clotter, a closure, something like that. This, this blood thinner is going to be able to navigate a narrowing vein or whatever, much better. So that's good. That's going to have implications for strokes, heart attacks, and um, thrombolism. Am I missing up two words together? Um, I don't know. Anyway, you, you, you doctors and nurses out there know maybe what I'm talking about. But for the rest of us, let's just say that there's new, really new dynamic medications coming on the discovery is in 23 they may they may actually be prescribed in 23 maybe very late 23 november december for sure 24 game changer you guys this is going to save lives okay so let me go back to the head again because i originally they were talking to me about memory loss they were talking about parkinsons they were talking about um alzheimers and and other types of diseases that affect the brain and they want to say that we are going to again again there's a breakthrough that this year is going to be you're going i i see like some magazine saying the 10 top medical breakthroughs in 2023 because 2023 is going to be a medical breakthrough year and looking back on it so you would see this probably in December of 2023, looking back, right? They're going to say, wow, we had breakthroughs in all these areas, okay? So we're going to have a breakthrough in Parkinson's, uh, also in Alzheimer's, and something about Louis Body. I don't, isn't that, I, I don't know. I think that has something to do with Parkinson's, but I don't really know. Um, also, um, uh, an important thing is we're making big strides in in preventing things and and diagnosing them early. So that's a big deal, right? The United States hasn't done a very good job of this. 
I'm not sure that a lot of other countries have done good jobs of this, but I will tell you that as I did this communication, this talk with this guide initially, they really talked about some of these other countries that that can afford to, and they're showing me Saudi Arabia, that can afford to really spend on this medical research and, and then bring it to their citizens. Um, now, another, I'm going to do another video where I talk about the attacks on the national health care in Britain and in Canada and in other places. I'm going to try not to do that today. I'm going to really try to just stick with, um, I'm going to really try to stick with the medical breakthroughs. So you're going to see a, a lot of other countries do the heavy lifting, as it were, in diagnosing the very early stages of things. And then you're going to see a lot of research in, in taking that early diagnosis and preventing the disease. So that's a big deal, right? That is a, that is a completely different model than we've had in our human, you know, last hundred years, right? A very different model. We're going to be spending a lot more money diagnosing early, early stages, and then getting it, attacking that virus or that disease early. Now, they just showed me this is also a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit gene therapy or or um, at least being diagnosed through some sort of DNA testing where you may have certain markers for certain types of diseases and then they can monitor you more closely and 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 here's the important part they're going to be able to say you're at risk for xyz now now this doesn't mean you have it it means that either a your dna b your lifestyle um or your body type makes you at risk or maybe a combination of those three things. And then this is the interesting part. They're going to say, here's your, here's what we're going to prescribe. So you see the entire, that's the word they're using entire. I mean, I was like, really the entire, yeah, the entire, the entire medical establishment is going to start switching to prevention and they're going to start prescribing. Okay. This given the things that we know, about you, whatever that is, your genetics, your body type, your lifestyle, you really need to make these changes. We're going to prescribe these changes for you. And maybe it it, it is a, a an interesting mix of, of modalities. It might be stress reduction. It might be a change in your diet. Um, and it might be a certain type of exercise. So I think in the past, we've all just said, well, you're, you just need to exercise. But now I see them saying, no, really the best type of exercise for you is Tai Chi or the best type of exercise for you is yoga. Um, so, so you're going to get much more specific because the exercise that they prescribe for you is going to be built into your genetics. You know, it's going to take your whole body holistically. So if you've got, you know, kind of some knees that aren't in the best shape, you know, they're not going to recommend running for you. They're really going to take all of your whole holistic body, including your genetics, your family history, all those things. And they're going to give you a prescription that's going to be very different. And in this way, we're going to get 10 years, 10 years before that disease would actually show up in your physical body. Now that's a big deal. So this is research that's happening right now in 2023. I'm going to be on, I'm not going to go into the politics, but I have to address the elephant in the room. And that is, is that somebody's got to make money off of it. So you're going to see that, that they're going to be making alliances, right? I mean, you're going to, you're actually going to see uh, Kaiser have uh, yoga clinics. And I'm, I'm telling you that this is going to be a completely ch a new change in our medical diagnosing and treatment. Of course, it's going to have to be a profit center because that's how we are right now in the States. But 
this is where we're going, folks. And I think it's really, it's really, really good. I love the fact that it's very preventative. We're going to get ahead of these diseases way ahead um, because we now know we have the knowledge, we have the technology. So that's really good. So, so we're going to be, but this year, 2023, we're going to be making some big strides in all types of Alzheimer, memory, anything to do with neuro, you know, neurology, the brain, anything to do with that. Also, that's going to go, that that's actually going to expand to some medicines. And this is plus minus. I don't know if this is a good thing, but I'm. they're telling me about Adderall. I've never taken Adderall. Of course, I've never been a college kid in the age of Adderall, but they're telling me they're going to be bringing forth again, I'm not sure this is a good thing, but it's a breakthrough. They're going to be bringing forth a new pharmaceutical drug that is going to bring a crispness to your thinking. So think about, they're showing me an energy drink like a, um, you know, like a rock star energy drink or a monster energy drink. Think about that and marry that with Adderall. <laughs> and and somehow you come out with this drug that crystallizes your thinking. I mean, it just sharpens it, right? Uh, so that's that's in the works. That's in the works for 2023. It, it um, It's getting uh, hung up in some FDA things right now, apparently, but uh, but it, it's a go. It's a green light. I see a green light. So I think this is actually going to come out probably, if not this year, then next year. Uh, so that's also having to do with the brain. Um, anything else with the head? I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing some new dental, uh, an overhaul of the dental in industry is what they're telling me. So uh, instead of these x-rays, you're going to be going to lasers. You're going to be having a new way of imaging the mouth. Um, x-rays are uh, old school. They're saying it's like using a tablet and a chisel to write a letter. Well, hello, we're we're way past that, right? So you're going to be seeing an overhaul in the way that they image the mouth, including the jaw bones, all, everything to do with the um, physical characteristics of the mouth, moving up and down the jaw bones, the teeth, the gums, the uh, all of this area. That also means that, and, and this is all things they're working on right now in 23, whether or not it, it's announced in 23 is a little bit iffy because there's funding that needs to be done. There's also, of course, an industry that needs to be changed. And dentistry hasn't been changed very much, right? It's been pretty much the same for a long time. Where we've allowed change in our medical world has been through specialties, Right. So we have now a lot of periodontal specialists uh, that deal with the gums and that sort of thing. But we haven't really upgraded the dentistry techniques. This is coming to a dentist near you. Um, big upgrades and, and also upgrades in cleaning. Again, less um, uh, the cleaning, uh, the way we do the cleaning now is uh, they're telling me can be very destructive to the teeth, to the enamel of the teeth, uh, to the surface of the teeth. And so there's going to be a new cleaning that uses uh, water, but it also uses some sort of laser like thing. Uh, so the water is a lubricant that softens. Uh, it, it allows the uh, process to get in to the teeth. So this is all things that are coming. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to make it this year, but it's it's being hatched. These things are really, they're getting funding. They're looking for funding. It's a process, but it's coming. Um, that also goes, uh, of course, to any kind of uh, surgery of the jaw, any kind of cancerous or any kind of surgery of the jaw, all of that is getting upgraded. Now, uh, let's go back to the eyes. Uh, well, you know, we've, we, I, the actual eye, the actual vision, let's go with vision. Um, there, there is some research being done on the optic nerve, but it's, it's not it's not going anywhere. I don't know why. We're just not making the same strides with vision 
that we are in other areas. I'm not sure why. Uh, perhaps 24 will be the year of the eye. But this year, I don't see, I just don't see any big breakthroughs for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, probably, uh, they said, well, probably because humans are refusing to see <laughs> reality. <laughs> they literally said that perhaps because humans are refusing to see the reality they're living in right now, they don't want to make their eyesight any better. How interesting is that, right? Uh, energetically speaking, we don't even want to think about seeing better because we can't handle what we're seeing already. So, and, and these things really make a difference, right? If if you're a researcher and you just can't stand to see what's happening in your country or in the world, you may not want to really work very hard on seeing clearer. It's very, very interesting. All right, let's keep moving down. Do I need to know anything? I mean, there's a little something going on about the sinuses. It seems like it seems like there's a some new drugs coming out for allergies. Uh, they might be dialing in the allergen drugs, right, because they can make more money. So now they'll actually tell you, oh, you don't really need Claritin. You need Claritin for this particular allergen. Like if you really want, if you're really, really experiencing hay fever, then you need to buy this version of Claritin. Um, it's just... Um, it is dialed in more. I'm not, I, I, I can't say that it's not. It is. It's dialed in more. Uh, but why they can't add that same little ingredient into the regular version of whatever drug it is, whether it's Claritin or any other drug, I'm not, don't want to call any one drug out because it's, it's across the board here, all of them. Uh, they're just looking at ways to differentiate their product and have more market share. But I will say that those drugs that they do dif differentiate will have a more potent response to that allergy. So there is something there. I might be drinking coffee this morning on this video, which I don't normally do because honestly, it is quite early. Um, okay, so let's move on. We're good hearing. Uh, hearing. There's some new. There's some new developments coming in for hearing. Much better hearing aids. I mean, much better. Supersonic. I don't know what that means. Perhaps that's something that they will use in an ad, or you may hear that in a commercial. But when they give me a word like that, it typically means that, and it has, it does happen that I hear that same word on the news or in some other way. Supersonic hearing. They, they, again, this is a little bit of marketing, but they're going, one of the marketing ploys is going to be, you're going to be able to hear with this device better than someone that has normal hearing. They're, they're really, I, you're going to see this maybe mid-year. You're going to see this. They're going to say, hear like a spy, <laughs> right? You know, like uh, Secret Service has the little hearing uh, buds in there, right? So um, I do think that it is an increase in the hearing. I, I do see that it is a much better hearing aid. I mean, again, we're talking about a big leap a big leap of ability to hear and the prices are going to come down on all the other hearing aids, which is, which is there, a lot of them are good enough, right? So it's going to make it much more affordable and accessible to people because the people that can buy it will start buying this, you know, supersonic quote unquote hearing aid and everybody else, those other hearing aids will drop in price. So that's not a bad thing. I don't think. Okay. Let me continue moving down. Um, so this is, so this is really interesting. If you mix the metaphysical with the actual medical, physical medical or 3d medical, whatever you want to call it. I think it's interesting that they talked about eyes. We don't want to see there's not much going on there, but one thing that is happening in the spirit guides have talked a lot about is that this is the people, the year of the people, um, people everywhere in every country are going to be standing up and, and, and it's as if they've woken up and looked around for the first time and realized that their elected officials have gone nuts and they're going to get in the streets or they're going to get very vocal, very, very vocal. And I'm not sure that I see it. It's not across any party line. It seems to be issue driven. So you might see more climate protests. You might see more 
and I'm using the word see, which is interesting, but you you might see, because I'm clairvoyant, you might see more climate protests, you might see more protest against corporate greed, you might see more protest against justice or, or justice, you know, police, policing, that kind of thing, right? But what's interesting is as I scanned down the body, I came here to my throat and specifically to my throat chakra, speaking also the throat, larynx. They're talking about the larynx. So it's interesting because this is empowered. This is empowered. The eyes, not so much. The voice, very much. So we are going to be looking at some breakthroughs in the trach. Is this a trachea? Uh, in the trachea, we're going to be looking at breakthroughs in breathing in this part of the breathing apparatus. Okay, so we're going to be looking at breakthroughs in intubation, which we got a big PhD in intubation during the pandemic, right? For a while there, many people were having to be intubated and doctors saw, nurses saw the pros and cons of this went to various manufacturers and have started conversations. And I think you're going to see a big change. It's going to be less invasive. You're looking at a less invasive. I don't know how it could be any less invasive, but to me, it looks like a much smaller apparatus. Okay. Um, so there, so there's, there are some breakthroughs in this area, the throat, the trachea, but also it's empowered for speaking up. People will be speaking their truth, even if some people don't want to see the truth. Okay. As we go down into the body, they want to talk about, um, I think they want to talk about musculature. Um, yes, they want to talk about musculature. Now, when I was talking to this spirit guide earlier, I thought they were talking about arthritis. That's why they want to say musculature, not joints. So we're, they're not talking about joints here. They're talking about the musculature. Um, this is. Uh, OK, I get it now. OK, right. So a lot of people are are out of work because they've pulled their back muscle out or they have sciatica. Uh, they have a strain or a sprain. So. There's going to be, right, there's going to be some new sort of muscle relaxer or muscle and also nerve, nerve block. So it has to do with mobility. Let's just call it mobility, right? For whatever reason, you, you can't walk, you've pulled a muscle, you've got a, a nerve, pinched nerve somewhere, mobility. We're also going to be talking a little bit about your disc in your back. Any of that thing, any of those things that could slow down your mobility, they're going to be making big strides with that. Now, it's very interesting. This is going to take place in physical therapy offices. They're going to have this new, and, and you guys tell me, maybe this exists, but I don't think so. Well, you guys talk about med beds. I don't know what that is. Every time you guys say med beds, I think of bed bugs. <laughs> so it's not a good thing for me, but <laughs> I don't know what a med bed is, but this is, maybe this is a med bed. I see the person laying down on, on a, on a bed and, and it's, it's got maybe some infrared heat and infrared uh, waves or something. Somehow it relaxes the muscles. Now it also has vibration this is very weird but your body has is slightly vibrating <laughs> i'm not kidding you lay on this thing and your body is slightly vibrating and that vibration is working the muscle the knots out of the muscle relaxing the muscle uh soothing the muscle and and it's also this is interesting that vibration is also i had it the vibration is also breaking up inflammation because inflammation oftentimes is part of the reason for the nerve to be pinched or the muscle to be 
there's just inflammation is terrible. So it's actually also reducing the inflammation. I'm going to have to look up a med bed. If I'm describing a med bed, that's going to be cool. So this is going to be big. This is a big deal. And what you will see is economies of scale, they're saying. So you'll see this start out to be something that you're somebody's going to have to prescribe. You'll have to go to a physical therapist that has this and you'll use that. Give us three years and, and we're going to be led by Europe in this. And this may actually be designed in Europe. But within years, this is something that you're going to be able to get with no prescription, like you would walk into an acupuncturist or a massage, you're just going to be able to walk into a center and have this done. Now, there are there is some training that needs to go with this. This is not self-serve. Uh, they will make them self-serve, but they won't be as efficacious. To get the real efficacious one, you, you can go to a center where there will be some staff that'll be trained specifically on that modality. But this is a big deal. Again, think about all the people that are on pain meds and still can't operate or the people that were on pain meds and now the VA or Medicare, Medicaid or whoever has the insurance companies have decided they don't deserve pain meds. And now they're just living in pain. This is going to really address that because as you're, this is so cool, man, I could probably talk for an hour about this because now they're showing me as you're on this bed, having the physical modality, the physical things being done to your body. They're also going to be using, now this is not initially because we're going into this age of Aquarius. We're going into this age of empowering our own healing modalities. So, as, and again, led by Europe here, they will have aromatherapy happening at the same time. And, and some of them will have VR, you know, virtual reality goggles. The point being that they want to calm the mind. They want to relax the mind, which then relaxes the body, which then allows the body to accept this type of healing easier. So I think that's really fascinating. So what you see here is a way to pivot away from pain meds. And I and, it, and it's long, this is long overdue in my opinion. So hopefully it will hit the shores of the United States sooner rather than later, but it it's a big money. This is, you know, I'm sorry to say, but everything is about money right now. And this represents big money. So I'm just asking them if insurance will pay for it. Some insurance will pay for it. The, the government is usually the last person to get online with something like this, but I really think that with the DIMS, with the Democrats in charge, and, and I'm sorry, I'm I'm a Democrat, but if, if the Republicans would get behind stuff like this, I would I would wouldn't vote Republican, but I would certainly say the Republicans are leading the charge here. But so far, the Republicans aren't leading the charge in anything. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But so far, they're not they're taking away school lunches and, and taking away VA benefits. I, I don't see them doing anything positive. So as we go into the next six, eight years, I see a lot of democratic influence and I, I, that's where we need the VA. You know what I mean? Like the free market will take care of itself. People have money. They're going to buy this. It's going to be worth it to them. But in regards to the VA and Medicare, Medicaid, we're going to need Dem support to get those things supported. Let's move on. Now that's, oh, why are they taking me back to hearing? Uh, that is, well, doesn't the VR have hearing? Maybe not. So so they're going to be adding, it's, it's a 3D multi-sensory. It's a multi-sensory experience. Right. And this, in this multi-sensory experience leads the way to color therapy, to more energy work that's where we're going 
that that's where we're going in general. But right now, we're still a greedy, profit-driven world and society, especially here in the United States. And we have to destruct and break down and dissolve that structure. That's not going to happen overnight. So that's just where this is going. Okay. So you will see people, maybe in the metaphysical community, take these, if they're med beds or whatever they are, and then add those other multi-sensory components. Okay. I'm going to move on, even though I think that's uh, fascinating. Let's talk about cancer, perhaps. I'm going to drink some coffee. This is my fuel for this morning. Are we going to be making any breakthroughs in cancer in 23? We're going to be making some breakthroughs in cancer, in children's cancer, apparently. I'm all for that. We're going to be making some big breakthroughs in leukemia, children's leukemia specifically. Um, but but also a lot of children's cancer because children are very resilient and the and the modalities work better. So we so I I'm what I'm getting is that the cancer researchers are finally understanding that what modalities work in children, they can then adapt that for adults instead of the other way around. What we've been doing is taking whatever we know about adults and applying that to children. It's not the same. It's actually not the same. So now they're realizing children have, they're just much more resilient. And so they're they're designing a designer drugs, designer treatments for children specifically. So you're going to see a better rate of survival and a better rate of treating cancer with children. So in general, cancer, I, I, cancer is on the rise. They're telling me our environment is polluted. They're telling me I don't see any really, maybe, maybe some developments along the lines of pancreatic cancer, which is a terrible cancer. It's it's a very uh, fatal cancer in my opinion. I do see some some new research in pancreatic cancer. Yeah, I do see that. That's good. I do see some better outcomes for pancreatic cancer. Uh, oh, lungs. They wanted to talk about lung cancer. That's right. Uh, or they wanted to talk about lungs in general, right? Didn't you guys want to talk about lungs? Breathing. Oh, right, right. Thank you. Yes. Right. So what they wanted to talk about with lungs wasn't cancer, but I'll get into that. I'll switch out of cancer for a moment and just talk about lungs. There are some new treatments for asthma, uh, some new inhalers, some new just new treatments in general for lung health, asthma, but also other lung issues. Now, all the way up to COPD. When we get to COPD, it's, it's at that point, it's almost, we're not, we don't have anything new to say about COPD, but they have a lot to say about what we can do when someone is at risk for COPD. Again, back to the preventative. So there's going to be some new treatments coming online for lung health in general. Some new uh, nebulizers, uh, don't know what that is, and some new breathing treatments. So also I wanna, so is there anything with lung cancer? Uh, the, Yes, in the sense that these new treatments are going to be palliative. These new treatments are going to help patients recover. So if they have to have a lung removed or if they have to have some kind of surgery, the remaining part of whatever the lung capacity or the lung organ that they have left, these treatments will make those organs be healthier and more, more productive 
in in doing the job that they do. Okay, so that's good. It, it's not going to affect act, the actual lung cancer, but it's going to affect the recovery of the lung cancer. So that's good. So they talked about the lungs and the lungs are, um, I don't know, what are they going to go philosophical or something? I don't know. Something about breathing. The world is breathing together. They want to say. I don't know. There's a synchronicity. Uh, they're, they're talking about a synchronicity of humans, of our heart beating together, our lungs breathing, breathing in and out together. And, and I think that just to take a little 30 second commercial break for spirituality, they're talking about meditate, meditate and think about your lung when you're breathing in and out, think about the earth breathing in and out the actual mother Gaia earth. Think about trees breathing in and out. Think about animals, fish. Think about your fellow humans breathing in and out together. This is actually going to help us link up with all of humanity, which is going to start a healing process. Okay. So think about your heart beating with all of humanity beating together. You can actually just be quiet and think, listen to your heartbeat. You can put your hand on your heart or you can put, maybe put your, you know, fingers on your pulse of your wrist, whatever that is, you know, and listen to your heartbeat and let that be your meditation and think about the heart beating of the world, which I think is quite a nice meditation. Okay. So what else do they want to talk about here? Are there any other breakthroughs? We've talked about, um, back to the head, migraines, that sort of thing. In, in as much as uh, something has to do with the eyes, not vision, but in as much as migraine has to do with a trigger with the eyes, that will also be addressed. Uh, going down into the body, we're talking now about into the trunk of the body. Well, no, no, never mind. They're taking me somewhere else. They want to go to joints. So they they took me to my elbows, which, which don't hurt, but uh, they want to go to the joints uh, and specifically the hands. They did talk about this earlier. Uh, there's real, you know, we're kind of really dependent on these. <laughs> you know, we pick up our coffee cup, we, we write, we type, we drive. It's kind of hard to be really functional without the use of, of our hands. So there is going to be some hand science, some, some knuckle uh, arthritis, uh, mobility. Again, back to a lot of mobility this year, a lot of mobility. So there's going to be some joint and bone health announcements that will be made. Uh, chondroitin, glucosamine chondroitin, I think you take that for your joints. I don't know, but that just came to me. So if you have joint issues, you may want to take that. That might be something that's not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm a psychic. So this is coming from some entity that isn't even human. However, you might consider that. Okay. Now going back into the trunk of the body, is there anything else you want to tell me about joints? Um, we humans would do better, would do well to have more. There's something missing in our diet that's really causing problems in our joints, be they hip joint, knee joint, finger joints, foot joints, toe joints, doesn't matter. Neck, doesn't matter. What are we missing? We're missing protein. And, and we're missing good fat. We've been brainwashed. <laughs> We've been brainwashed. Oh, God, this is pull up a chair, y'all. This is getting ready to get interesting. I've got coffee. I hope you're, you know, got whatever you need. You know, maybe wear a diaper so you don't have to go to the bathroom. Well, of course, we've been brainwashed. We had Trump for four years. I mean, Listen, I don't want to be disrespectful, but this is not this is not news. Okay, never mind. We've been brainwashed about our diet. We've been brainwashed about our diet. We 
jump haphazardly, they're saying, from diet to diet to diet to try to solve various problems, all the while not paying attention to the thing that's in front of us. And that is, drum roll, processed food. Processed food is really bad for us, apparently. Uh, that makes me uh, at real risk. Um, it, it's it's full of a uh, filler and bad things, dyes, things that. Okay, I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going out way out on a limb here, but I'm I'm getting something about preservatives and the fillers. The only way I can describe it is drying up the fluid in your joint. Like, is there fluid in our joint? I don't know. Whatever that is in your joint, they're going to tell me a word in a minute. I think it starts with a C. Um, whatever that is, it, it's drying it up. And and I think they know that. I think they, they have enough. I think they can, they, they don't know this in the sense that they haven't created a research paper on it, but these scientists know A plus B is going to equal C. So they know a likely outcome of this ingredient is this problem in the body. And as long as nobody does research on it, then they can say they didn't know. Okay. So processed foods are really wreaking havoc with our joints. That's what they're telling me. I mean, I'm thinking macaroni and cheese right now, <laughs> which I don't eat ever really, but I love dearly and I could eat a lot of it. But I mean, what else do they want me to give up? If they start talking about chocolate, I'm ending this video right now. <laughs> I'm just cutting off the transmission. That's it. Um, and it is true, chocolate, I just saw an ad, a, a research article, of course, they put it in front of me, that chocolate actually has high amounts of lead. Look it up. It's scary. Uh, it truly is scary. Okay. Not going there. I'm really not. All right. So is there anything else you want to tell us about our joints? Well, you know, so our diet. So so they're showing me, the, uh, I'll also say this, this is something they talk about a lot. Our vegetables, the vegetables that you eat, are not grown in soil that has minerals in it. The soil is devoid of everything because they they kill the soil. They kill all the, the pests or the viruses or diseases that might be on that plant, right? They, they just need a healthy plant and they need X number of them and they need to repeat that process ad infinitum. So they're growing these plants in soil devoid of the things that humans need. When we eat a vegetable, we're hopefully getting some of the minerals from that soil. And that and and that's really important to your body. So try to eat organic, although I will tell you that even the organic plants are grown in, in, in very poor soil. So, so if you can afford it, if you can afford it, and even if this is something that you splurge, or honestly, what they're saying is dig, dig up your backyard and plant some plants back there and start growing your own vegetables. That's the healthiest thing you can do for your body is get a balance. And and they and they were trying to give me an analogy but I didn't quite catch it. And I think you you can put it together. But do you know how I can't catch that analogy when certain things you eat or, or let's say honey, uh honey bees that have access to certain types of flower flowers to pollinate to create the honey they sometimes have a, a, a little bit of a different taste. So this is the thing. If you're growing vegetables in the Midwest, you're going to have a certain type of minerals, typically. If you're growing vegetables in the East or the West, you're going to have different types of, of minerals, okay? But it's still 
minerals. There's still minerals that your body needs. So they're saying if you can afford it, go to a farmer's market, you know, or trade out. This is really what they want us to do. And this is what I kind of see happening. A lot of people have backyard chickens. A lot of people are, are having fresh eggs, right? You may have a vegetable garden and go to your neighbor and trade trade some squash for some eggs. That would be that would make your spirit guides gleeful. It it would create community and and it would increase our health tremendously. Those chickens are eating bugs and things in your neighborhood. You're growing vegetables in your neighborhood. You're benefiting the whole ecosystem of your neighborhood. Plus you have a community. So if you really want to help your body, try to eat less processed foods. And that also means less dairy, apparently. They just told me. And try to eat more vegetables that have minerals locally grown in some way. Okay. Holy moly. All right. Let me see if there's anything else. Let me go to the gut real quick. Cause I feel like the, I, I really need, there's something there. Um, there seems to be a new drug coming on board that has to do with indigestion or acid reflux. Well, acid reflux, not so much. It's really in the stomach. It feels more like something acid in the stomach that that leads to ulcers. Okay, so you have a lot of acid in your stomach and you don't do anything about it and you still have your stress. You have to remember there's an outside component to the inside ailment. Outside component component to the inside ailment. I feel like they're going to be treating your gut with a new drug that's going to be better. So that's coming on board. There's some new thing going on with kidney research, kidney care. There's really, I, I've really spent all this time talking about Western medicine, but honestly, holistic homeopathic medicine is going to be just breaking out in popularity and in efficacy in 23, 24, 25, 26. So there's also a lot of homeopathic remedies that are already known, but are going to become more used, more widely known and more widely used. And there has there's something about kidney health and a an homeopathic remedy for it that's really going to take on or have a more popularity as we go into 23, 24. So if you have any sort of kidney issues, you may want to go to a homeopathic doctor or look into that because it does look very promising. Um, and then I go over to the liver and the liver is, <laughs> a liver is a repository of our toxicity, um, apparently. So, There are some liver breakthroughs, but they're not ready yet. They're, they're, I, the liver feels blocked to me, like our eye vision feels blocked to me. I don't feel any big liver care breakthroughs happening. It's like a block is there. I don't know why. It's interesting. Uh, we go anywhere else. Let's talk about women's reproductive health. Uh, ovaries, fallopian tubes, uh, or tube. I don't know. We have some issues there. We have some issues. Uh, we have, um, so again, we're going to be able to predict, predict. That's a good word. We're going to be able to diagnose and possibly predict ovarian cancer better. We're going to be able to diagnose it better. They're going, they're just showing me, I don't know anything about this, but they're just showing me that, that you're going to see more surgeries to remove ovaries quicker. 
So they're not going to be as slow to react to that type of cancer. They're going to get in there quick, quicker, and they're going to remove that instead of perhaps using some sort of treatment. They're just going to remove it. I don't know why there's been a reluctance or it feels like there's been a reluctance to do that, but this is, this is what they're telling me. Um, And, and overall, in 23 and 24, women are going to have more control over their reproductive rights. We're going to claw back, and that's the word they're using, literally claw back, which means it's not going to be easy. We're going to claw back our control, women's control over their own reproductive rights. So that's important. That's all. And you're going to see, in general, a big, a more public addressing of women's reproductive health going from now into 26. You're going to start seeing headlines. You're going to start seeing articles. You're going to start seeing doctors talking about it on news shows. It's just going to be more talked about. It's not very talked about right now, right? So it's going to make the headlines. It's going to take up more space in our public discourse, which is good. I'm going to move to men's health. Uh, I, I'm just going to be looking, I think, at the prostate, uh, potentially. Um, I mean, prostate cancer is, is pretty well-researched, and, and I, I feel that it is very I, – I feel like if men go get tested, that, that it's very – it's a very – controlled, you know, cancer. It's, it's very, it has very good outcomes. Okay. Um, but I do see even more, a, a fine tuning, a fine tuning of that treatment. They, they're going to be letting go of some of the treatments that, that have been popular, and they're going to be bringing in some newer treatments that really have much better success and less effect of the person's lifestyle. Okay. So maybe it's, maybe it's like that they don't, I mean, I'm not talking about ED or anything. I'm, I'm talking about, um, energy. I'm talking about some of the treatments maybe have chemotherapy or something like that. Right. So I feel like we're moving away from that. We're moving into things that are quicker and less impactful on people's lives, people's energies. Anything else in the gut? Uh, yeah, the the colon, the the intestines. Uh, we will again. You're going to hear people talk about colon health. This is going to be very much talked about. Perhaps we'll have a celebrity or a very well known person, maybe even pass from colon cancer, that might bring a lot of attention to it. Again, this is diet and stress also with the stomach and with the basically all of the organs here in your in the trunk of the body is diet and stress and and exercise. They want to say these are the three components that can help you have a better gut health or avoid those types of problems, okay? So you're but you're going to see a lot of I don't know. They're just talking about a lot of news and reporting on gut health, on, on, on colon health. So that's interesting. So that's going to be more in the news. So I think overall, you're going to see a lot, a lot more news talking about health and not just publicity or ads or marketing, real people talking about this on news shows having doctors on and that sort of thing. And the last thing I want to talk about is interestingly enough, COVID has taught us a lot about mutating cells, which is going to help us deal with cancer. So who would have thought that? I don't know, but COVID is a master at, at mutating and 
So is like HIV is also a master at. <laughs> so COVID is a master at mutating. And so is cancer. And so is HIV. There are, there are a few different diseases that have just been very hard to nail down because of the mutation. And I got to say that COVID has beat them all. And it's really been a masterclass for our scientists in learning how these things mutate. That is going to help us with cancer. I know it's surprising, but it's really going to help us. Also, that also the pandemic also helped us, as they mentioned earlier, how to use trachs, having new uh, ways to uh, intubate people. We learned so much during the pandemic. It's like literally every doctor, every nurse, researcher, and a lot of these drug companies went to a master class. That information is going to help us in almost every other part of our healthcare system. So, I, you know, I wouldn't recommend it as a, as a master class, but we did it, we took it, and now we're going to benefit from what we've learned. So I think that is at least something helpful, right? So I know I didn't cover everything, but um, that's basically all I've got for you right now. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I offer political videos where I do probabilities, predictions about political races, but I also have Way Out Wednesdays. I do a lot of spiritual videos where I talk about ghost and I talk about energy and I talk about mediumship, talking to spirits, talking to your loved ones across the other side, just basically all types of, of different topics. So hopefully you'll find something here on the channel that, that piques your interest. You can always go to my main channel page by clicking on the icon and you can click on playlist and then you can see a lot of the different things that I do. So if you're not interested in the political, you may be interested in the spiritual or vice versa. Hopefully something here uh, piques your interest and gives you something to think about, uh, maybe inspires you as well. Thank you so much for listening to my video today. I wish you all the best and most importantly, very, very good health. Take good care. Disclaimer. This is not meant to be medical advice and should not be taken as medical advice. Please see your doctor or professional for any medical care.